Hello, bienvenidas mujeres del siglo XXI. Welcome to Women of the 21st Century, a podcast where we talk with women who are leaders, entrepreneurs, and forward women who have changed their lives in this 21st century. I'm Sarai, I'm the host. Let's start talking. Bienvenidos a Mujeres del Siglo XXI, your podcast. I'm Sarai, your host, and I have a special guest. She's a therapist for kids and families, Agustina Hortel Ríos. Bienvenida, chica. Hola, hola. Mucho gusto, Sarai. Mucho gusto siempre. Let's talk. Let's chat, 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 chat. Machismo, that's the topic we will try to talk in, but I want to know more about Who is Tina or Agustina? <laughs> well, um, bueno, eh, mi nombre es Agustina Ortel Rios López. Soy un LCSW. Tengo mi consultorio en Danbury Healing Insights Counseling Services. Um, yo especializo en trauma. So I specialize in trauma. I work with individuals, couples, um, families, uh, mainly with the Latino community because I am a Spanish-speaking uh, mental health clini clinician, and um, this is a way that you know I can give back to my community. Yeah. So um, I was I was checking your bi biography, and I see you're from Argentina. I am. I wow. Am. I see you mate there. I do. I have my mate all the time. It helps me. <laughs> Tengo mi mate y lo llevo por todos es lados. Es como el café, ¿no? <laughs> sí, sí, sí. sí. Me, 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 me gusta mucho mi mate. Siempre, yeah. siempre ando tomando mi mate como la buena argentina que soy. Yeah. I love my mate. It's, it's very Argentine. Um, you know, but in, in other countries, like I know Paraguay, Uruguay, and Brazil, they yeah. have some form of mate too. And I, and I would see your... Uh, I would say you're, um, you like your football. Um, oh, sí, los eh, argentinos. ¿Cómo se llama? Que... Es de fútbol, uh, soccer. Soccer, soccer. We love soccer. We have Maradona, you know. Maradona. It's, uh, rest in peace. Um, uh, the guy's a legend, you know, una legenda Maradona. Yeah. Y, y realmente nosotros eh, sí nos gusta mucho el fútbol, el fútbol y el asado. Y el asado. <laughs> el barbecue and, uh, and, and soccer. That's yes. what we're into. <laughs> so that's good. So, so I want to know more. So how are you you're involved on this and uh, be therapist? Um, Why? What, what are your, your focus more on this? So, um, so yo especializo en trauma, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. eh, I, I specialize in, in trauma. Um, y, y bueno, como trabajo con la comunidad latina, eh, veo que de repente un tópico que, que siempre sigue volviendo es el tópico del machismo y, mm -hmm. y veo que sí impacta mucho a la familia. What I'm saying is, um, eh, you know, I specialize in trauma and, mm -hmm. and in being a mental health clinician that's, you know, Spanish speaking, I, um, I see that, you know, machismo is something that impacts my families. Um, And, and so, you know, I specialize in trauma, but, you know, I've, I've done a lot of work around machismo with both men and women, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and children, of yes. course, because our future generations, mm -hmm. you know, it's very important to educate. You know, education is healing. Um, education is power. Exactly. And so, especially as a minority community, um, I think that, you know, what's very important is for us to educate ourselves. Exactly. You know, and so, you know, algo, algo que yo pienso es... Um, es, es que es muy importante como tener una psicoeducación sobre el machismo uh -huh. y realmente lo que quiere decir, lo que hace a nuestra comunidad y, y, y de repente eh, cómo, cómo puede eh, pasar el trauma uh -huh. eh, por el machismo. Como para los hijos. Sí, yeah, I was, um, I was thinking that. Uh, so, how do you think the problem is on the children? You know, where is, where does it begin? ¿Dónde empieza el problema? Where does you think when the, When they tell, like, community Latins, they tell, boys don't cry, boys uh, don't do that, boys don't don't have to help in, in the home, you know, clean the dishes and everything sí. that. So, so uh, this, yeah. that's how it started, yeah? Yeah, so, um, so, you know, I think machismo, um, I think sometimes it, it gets a... a the wrong understanding, you know, because mm -hmm. it, it gives us the notion that we're supposed to... We're supposed to hate men, right? Mm -hmm. Because men uh, abuse, you know, uh, the power that I guess they think they have. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, but um, it really is not against, you know, a man or woman. I just want to clarify that it really is about um, being against uh, the negative attitudes of oppression and aggression towards women in Latin America. Exactly. You know, and it's not just a problem in Latin America. It's a problem all over the world. Mm -hmm. But machismo, the origin of the word, comes specifically from Latino America. And, you know, this is very much shown in that, you know, every two hours uh, a woman dies in Latin America, you know, for being a woman. Exactly. Um, you know, and uh, even though there's always an exception, mm -hmm. uh, siempre hay una excepción. Pero, it, yo pienso que el machismo por sí es esa actitud negativa, opresiva uh, de agresión contra la mujer en mm -hmm. Latinoamérica. Estaba diciendo que cada dos horas una mujer se muere por ser mujer en Latinoamérica. Exactamente. Um, eh, entonces, you know, going back, entonces creciendo con esto, uh -huh. eh, está muy en, engranado en, en nuestra comunidad, uh -huh. en nuestra cultura, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿cómo hacemos, cómo hacemos para pararlo? Uh -huh. right? How, what do we do to stop it? I uh -huh. mean, it's, it's big, it's very much ingrained in our community. Uh, so what do we do to stop it? That's a very good question, yeah. you know? Um, and, so, and so I have... Um, I have some examples. Okay, okay. Um, explain, I have some explain examples <laughs> of, uh, you know, machismo, um, machismo, and and how you know it could be it could be taught you know to a child. So one of them is it, that that I've seen in my work is um, women not having authority over their children or in the home um, because it's taken away by men. Wow. Um, so this is this very much looks like a household that the children run. That, you know, mom is. At home, um, she's caretaking. You know, she's a wonderful mom. You know, um, obviously, you know, this is what she's grown up with. So this is all she knows, you know. And so um, and so the children uh, being raised like this implies a few things. Um, it implies that um, it implies that, you know, a woman um, shouldn't be respected. And, mm -hmm. and the way that translates is because our parents are forms of authority. Yeah. Right. And so while we know, while we know uh, that people in positions of authority um, sometimes uh, are not to be respected <laughs> um, just because they're an authority, uh, people abuse their power um, for children, you know, uh, Viewing a parent as authority is uh, a way that we respect our parent and a way that we then learn to respect other people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so by taking away authority from a woman, um, essentially, we're teaching the child not to respect the woman, that a woman has no voice, that a woman shouldn't shouldn't have anything to do with telling anyone what eso to pasa, do. Eso pasa. Mi, 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 mi abuelo era así. Mi abuelo era como que, to my grandma, shut up. Don't talk. Yeah, uh, yeah. Grandma, she had to be. Don't say nothing. Whatever Grandpa he said, they had to be. He's the voice. Es la voz. Él tenía que decir así era y así lo decía. Claro, y y y y así es como así así pasa a veces la autoridad. And the, uh, and, the, and the kids to, the kids see that see that problem see that oh sí. y es y te voy a decir que se repite tanto porque es tan inconsciente. Yeah. Están, so, you know, el cerebro es, un, es una máquina de procesar patrones. Mm -hmm. Y a veces desde muy joven nosotros eh, vemos cosas y aunque no lo podemos definir, you know, aunque no sabemos lo que es, mm -hmm. todavía vemos eh, que hay como una interacción ahí. Y lo que termina pasando es esas mismas interacciones eh, a un nivel muy inconsciente nosotros vemos en otros seres humanos y después interactuamos, yeah. no necesariamente porque es algo seguro, no necesariamente porque es algo bueno, sino es como una costumbre y, no, y somos más vulnerables cuando you know, crecemos así. Como el ejemplo que usé, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. eh, si, una, si una mujer no tiene autoridad en la casa con los hijos, eh, obviamente autoridad es eh, respeto eh, hacia al adulto en la casa y Exacto. después sacando esa autoridad estamos diciendo no respetes a la mujer la mujer no tiene voz ¿verdad? Mm. Um, entonces eh, obviamente eh, nosotros crecemos con eso aunque somos muy chiquititos para decirlo so definirlo. you think this is coming when you are little so the, desde que somos chiquitos we are, everything we'll see is like a sponge yeah at, like the first five years I think it is you know your personality develops and you've already uh, learned so much mm -hmm. you know you're, you're Your brain has has multiplied in size and it has taken 
awakening, um, a lot of personality structures. So if, if they see those issues on, on the family, so it's going to be when he get and grow up, he's going to be like, not like this. He's gonna. He's. I don't think he's gonna see the the problem. Is 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 gonna happen when he was little? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, otro another dynamic. Mm -hmm. Otro otra dinámica que veo en la casa um, es que a veces los varones se pueden conducir sin límites. Um, o muy pocos límites en comparación con las mujeres. Okay. ¿Verdad? Entonces vos sí puedes salir. So, so uh, what I'm saying is, you know, um, I see another dynamic that happens of how to push machismo forward is when males are allowed to do um, more and have little to no limits in comparison, you know, to women. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this, this is an issue um, mm -hmm. because... Um, when we don't uh, set limits from an early stage, you know, like our parents' voices become our internal guidance, okay. right? So, like, I just want to start there. Eh, eh, la voz de nuestros padres eh, es nuestra guía interna. Wow. Okay. Entonces, como para el padre que siempre está gritando, ofendiendo, um, eso es algo que se va a quedar con, con el hijo de uno y con, con la persona, mm -hmm. ¿verdad? Um, and, and that's another thing that, that I want to get into, like violence and yelling and, uh, and offending a child and, and what that does and, and how that makes somebody vulnerable, you know, to future uh, DV relationships. But um, as I was saying, you mm -hmm. know, not setting limits on a male, right? Uh, not putting that foundation for putting brakes on impulses, um, especially towards women, um, especially not towards men. Uh, this is dangerous, you know, and then you, you match it up with societal attitudes and beliefs and limited representation of female authority. And that could further enforce not only machismo, but rape culture. You know, oh, so oh, really, yes. OK, yes. So, so it's it's very um, it's very important, you know, to set limits, um, first of all, because when we're not setting limits on our boys, yes. our boys grow up you know, having difficulty with discipline, having wow. difficulty following through, you know, they think that they could just act out and do whatever they want to do. But it just it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't work that way. You know, alcoholism, you know, it, when you don't set limits for your child, that internal voice um, has difficulty setting limits for themselves, you know, and there's ways and ways to set limits in a healthy way. So that the child could then, you know, grow and, 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 mm -hmm. and be healthy. Wow. Um, but this is also something that That's I see. That's true. It's really true. You have to put limits on your kids. Right. Yes. And then on the other side, we put too much limits on women. So for the boy, you know, eh, otra cosa es, eh, le ponemos muchos límites a las mujeres a veces. Eso es otro, otro ah. patrón que veo, otra dinámica que claro. veo. No estoy diciendo que esto es todas las familias, no, pero no. otras cosas en trabajando, you know, working in the field, these are the you certain dynamics. You see the dynamics. different, I, I remember my, my mom, I'm going to explain this. My uh -huh. mom, she would sure. say to my brother, oh, he can do everything. He can he also, he can he can go to the party, he come back later. But for me, I was like, Mom, I want to go to, I want to see my friends also. Or I want to go to to the, see a movie, something. My mom said no, always. But my brothers, uh, he go wherever he go. It's, it's no problem. He don't, he don't have limit for him. But for me, I can, I can. I can enjoy it, you know. I can go even even the party. I had to come back. My mom, he started like, no, no, no. It's too late. Muy tarde, ya no más. No more. No more party for you. <laughs> right. Y, y esto se vuelve un, un problema eh, cuando le ponemos eh, como límites muy exigentes a, a, a la las mujer mujeres. Porque impide, eh, impide el desarrollo de la mujer. Cuando ponemos muchos límites a la mujer, impide el desarrollo eh, aprendiendo cómo mantenerse uno seguro. Eh, crea un sentimiento de, de como miedo, ¿verdad? Como tiene miedo de todo. Like, when you put too much limits on somebody, you, you, um, you kind of create a barrier for the development, development of them in society and what's safe and what's not safe. And so then all of a sudden, everything is a, a scary a situation. Scary situation. And, and it impedes on knowing the difference between what is okay and what is not okay, oh, okay. Um, what is safe and what is not safe, making them vulnerable to getting into um, unhealthy relationships. Also, like, you know, it also speaks to the power of, you know, what's at the top of a of a DV relationship or of a abusive relationship, mm -hmm. which is power and control. Okay. So when you as a parent, you know, you're you're controlling, you know, to that extent, it mm -hmm. is abusive. And then it teaches the child, 
you know, that it's okay. Mm. En, entonces, lo que estaba diciendo es también cuando ponemos límites, no solamente estamos impidiendo el desarrollo de la mujer y en ver qué es seguridad, que no es seguridad, claro. pero también, eh, también tenemos que pensar en qué controlador es y que eso es un patrón de una relación que no es, es saludable ni es una y que no es segura, uh -huh. ¿verdad? Entonces, se hace más vulnerable a interactuar en relaciones así sin saber porque ha estado como es scary sí, all the time y, y eso y es y es un tópico muy difícil de hablar porque saca de que saca de, de que es you know de, de todo el espacio que tiene eh, un, un, una, una víctima verdad yeah. pero realmente no es la culpa de la mujer okay. nunca 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 pero eh, inconscientemente hay ese patrón ahí que quizás hace más vulnerable. Y uno como abusador también sabe cómo escoger y sabe cómo manipular. Well, that's why. Entonces es como dos factores bien fuertes. Yeah, so, so yeah, like, um, like, like I said, you know, we, um, when, we, when we set the, the limits, you know, two mm -hmm. factors, um, when we do too many uh, limits, you know, it, it shelters. Mm -hmm. it, 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 and it impedes on the development. Mm -hmm. um, the development uh, has to do the development of like, you know, knowing what's safe and what's not safe. You know, so like when we're not able to explore in a social setting, okay, like how are we supposed to know what's safe and unsafe? Mm -hmm. You know, we're at home and then our parents are, you know, controlling and, you know, putting limits. And so you could imagine how that looks as an adult, okay. like thinking that that's okay thinking that that's normal. Okay. You know, so, you know, that's basically. And, um, and you know, there's there's also, uh, uh, you know, a great deal of, of trauma, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. comes from machismo. Yeah, absolutely. Most for women, like, like I explained to you, when my mom told me don't go nowhere, stay home, do this, do that, and I see my brothers competed him he always do whatever he want and he was having many troubles in that he was on the jail because he was seen limit this because But, he was really uh, he had these issues problem because he always do everything he want to do claro porque hay esa impulsividad Yeah. Exacto. Entonces, no sé, there shouldn't be too much limits, but there also should not be no limits, you know, because then somebody doesn't have, have that. They have to be half and half, yeah. Half and half and equally. Exactly. You know, and it, it says a lot about, it speaks on how, you know, we're going to go on and treat other human beings. Like we, you know... It, there should be equality But you think maybe <laughs> across the that... board. So like if you're teaching that to a child in any, you know, like there's always going to be that that differential and yeah. that differential could, you know, uh, could go out into other, you know, places, you know, like um, so. So we, we, we are we're back on this. So you think like my mom, she's she was machista. Yeah, um, I don't do know. Think? I don't know, and I don't want to offend your mom. <laughs> right. She gave birth to you. She gave you life, and, and most, God bless most her. Most of Mexican culture, <laughs> their own mom look there. They acted like that. They oh. say, you know, that mujeres aquí, hombres allá, and um, boys they can do whatever they want to do. You can come back to the house, whatever, whatever the time doesn't matter. But girls, no. Y sí, y por eso, y, y, y por esas actitudes, you know, no hay excepciones, y no voy a decir que todas las madres que ponen esos tipos de límites a sus hijos um, van a tener problemas tampoco, porque, mm -hmm. you know, hay excepciones, pero mm -hmm. sí podría decir uh, que cuando una mujer o un hombre o un padre pone esos límites y, y es basado del género, Um, mm -hmm. Eso impacta, impacta como nuestra habilidad para controlar nuestros impulsos, eh, impacta nuestra habilidad para ser disciplinados. Okay. Eh, y, y también como, eh, you know, just like talking in general, um, you know, like uh, of women and, you know, and Men. how how we're objectified. Um, you know, like there was a study that said that, you know, women are viewed by body parts. Like, we're not even viewed as a whole human being. We're viewed as body parts, you know? And so this says a lot about, oh, like... New how, body yeah. parts. And then there was another study that um, that kind of showed, like, how, um, you know, men... Uh, 
men viewing women uncovered and automatically uh, seeing a sexual object and like women not so much obviously there's always exceptions verdad okay. porque no podemos decir que todo es así o todo es así. no todo es blanco y negro claro pero pero imagine um, how 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 much we've been objectified over the years that now we're viewed as body parts and we're not viewed as people mm -hmm. we're viewed as sexual objects ahora eh, estaba, estaba diciendo que hay un estudio que dice que ve la mujer como parte de ese cuerpo y no como un ser humano. Mm. Y también otro, otro estudio que está diciendo que cuando un hombre ve a una mujer encubierta, eh, se, se ve como un objeto sexual. Mm -hmm. um, quisiera hablar de que, you know, a veces yo pienso en situaciones sociales, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. eh, puede ver como una atracción hacia alguien, eh, alguien puede ver a alguien y decir, wow, es linda, uh -huh. es lindo. Uh -huh. Eso es normal. Okay. Uh, el problema es cuando no sabemos eh, medir la situación social y cruzamos una línea y actuamos a lo impulsivo. Okay. Entonces, eso no es problema de la persona que tiene algo mal puesto, uh -huh. um, como, o que tenga algo puesto o nada puesto, como sea. Uh -huh. um, eso termina siendo el problema de la persona que no puede controlar sus impulsos. Okay. Um, y que también quiero decir que es muy, uh, es muy común que cuando, lo, cuando una persona eh, you know, es, um, es inapropiada sexualmente, eh, que sea you know, violador, que sea uh -huh. pedofílico, que sea, eh, hay una necesidad para racionar. El okay. acto. Uh -huh. Entonces decir algo como, pero ella tenía esa ropa. Um, no, <risa> no, porque, porque eso no raciona nada. Exactly. You know? It's nothing about what, what you're putting in your body. Or right. How you dress is nothing about because it's the, the woman, like a say, uh, sexual assault. They say, oh, because she's wearing this sexy dress. That's her fault. Right. So it's it's not like that. No, no, it's not. It's not. Um, so so that's you know that that goes that goes that speaks on you know how we're objectified and mm -hmm. and you know the need for you know people sexually or sexual like I guess that are like sexual deviants mm -hmm. or commit sexual crimes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's always that need to rationalize. Oh, sorry. They're telling me I have to put the there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, sorry, I was away from the from the uh, the microphone. Um, so, so yeah. So, whenever you know someone commits a sexual crime, there's always that need to rationalize. So, you know, like it's like it's a matter of just not falling into that game where she was wearing that. So, you know, what does she expect? Or so you you, you know. tell me something about you can see someone and say, oh, it is Linda, it is Lindo, that looks nice, that looks good, okay, but it's it just stop right there. So it's right. Or it could mutually be agreed on that mm -hmm. you want to continue with the person, you know, because mm -hmm. that's how relationships start, you know. Yeah, yeah. A veces uno se trae y, bueno, hay un romance ahí, quizás. You Sometimes know? it's pero not. Es, pero es con, con, y a veces no, ¿verdad? Yeah. Pero, pero eh, hay eh, el punto es el consentimiento yeah, el consentizado y también que sea mutual, you Exacto. know, y así sí es correcto. There has to be a mutual attraction. Claro, okay. claro. Ahora eh, lo que termina pasando con machismo es que esos, yo pienso que esos impulsos eh, no son controlados y después son racionados. Y, y, y bueno, como ves que en Latinoamérica hay mucho femicidio, hay muchas violaciones y muchas de, de esas violaciones y, 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 y femicidios eh, son con ese razonamiento, ¿verdad? Pero sabemos que no, que no es así y que no debe ser así. ¿Puedes you eso? Sí, sí. I, I think I think I said it uh, uh, before, but yeah, yeah, like you know, in, in Latin America, you know, um, you know that that happens, and and I'm not, you know, I I love Latin America, and and I've really worked with a lot of trauma uh, in Latin America and a lot of attitudes and beliefs around machismo, right? Um, and I'm not saying anything against um, the culture itself. I'm just speaking on machismo and what it looks like in my community and what I've worked on, you know. Um, and this is a reality, and it's fact because there's a very high incidence of it if you read the statistics, mm -hmm. you know, of women, you know, getting raped, of women getting killed, you know, for being women. Um, exactly. So, so, you know, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't say something if I, I 
you know, I didn't, it's not, and, and like I said, you know, I just, I want to continue working on the idea of like, you know, me not, me not hating, uh, me not hating uh, the man. Um, you know, I have, uh, a, this. I have a father, I have a husband, I have a son. Um, you know, we all, we all feel the same way, you know, because it's a healthy way uh, to feel, um, you know, what I'm saying. It's just that um, it, it's, it's, imp- it's an important topic for men and women um, because we are all the victims of machismo. Yes. And uh, the reality is we can't hate men you know, if not love them more and encourage them to think differently and, and work together with men uh, to end machismo, um, exactly. you know, because, uh, you know, it's it, machismo is, is a dynamic and, and it does imply change for me, for a lot of people. Um, and, and change is hard, you know, um, and for an attitude or belief across your culture to change in one shot, especially um, when it's accepted by men and women in Latin America um, is Must- hard. Yes, it's, it's hard. hard. It must for you. You're married with a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my husband's Mexican. I'm Argentine. In Argentina, there's a lot of femicide too. You know, yes, uh, that's true. We struggle. You know, like you know, um, but but you know, uh, uh, me and my husband, my husband and I, we have um, we have really great conversations about um, about machismo and and how we feel. Um, And and he's he's very supportive. He's very supportive of me and having these conversations. And and, you know, like I, I like I said, you know, I, I love my husband. I, I love my son. I love my father. You know, I've had great men in my life. Um, and um, and I think I think that, you know, it's not about hating the man or giving up on them, which I do understand if you're a victim mm-hmm. of a crime, mm-hmm. of a male crime. You know, I do understand how it could be hard, you know, because I, I don't know. Yeah. Sí, yo, yo entiendo cómo, cómo podría ser difícil que de repente un hombre te haga un crimen y que se pase de lanza y ser el víctima y no querer lidiar con hombres. Sí, entiendo ese dolor también. Y no estoy diciendo, bueno, vamos a olvidar todos nuestros eh, problemas, todos nuestros traumas y vamos a amar al hombre. Es como no, easy. no, a veces no es tan fácil y eso también eh, lo entendemos. Pero una manera que podemos seguir adelante adelante, ¿verdad? Uh, porque a veces, a veces no hay mucho que se, no hay mucho que se puede hacer, you know, se uh-huh. hace lo que se puede, ¿verdad? Uno, yo individualmente, yo trato de hacer lo que hago en, en, en mi terapia, yo trato de dar eh, educación psicológica, porque yo pienso que eh, muchos de estos patrones son muy inconscientes, uh-huh. pero después, cuando Uh, uno trae esta, esta información, estos patrones, estas interacciones eh, al, uh, al consciente, uno se siente más empoderado para hacer diferentes decisiones porque uno se entiende a sí mismo. Okay. You know, I, I think that what I was saying is I, I think that, you know, it's, it's very easy to blame. You know, it's very easy to talk about all the negative, but... Um, I think that in, in therapy, you know, especially what, what, how I work with machismo in therapy, um, you know, when we are able to pinpoint, um, you know, these, these ideas of machismo, um, when we're able to understand it, because it, it could be very unconscious, especially when you experience it from the time you're born until adulthood. You know, so when you grow up with all of this, it becomes very much a part of you and it's hard to undo and it's very unconscious. So when you're able to bring this uh, to your consciousness, You know, you feel more empowered uh, to make better decisions, to form better relationships. The, the, most, the most important thing, uh, I think, in life is, is relationships and to be able to relate. Um, you know, relationships uh, can cause a lot of joy, a lot of happiness, mm-hmm. you know, if we're healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, but unfortunately, sometimes uh, we repeat cycles of trauma uh, in our relationships without knowing, you know, being unconscious, you know, and, and I see, I see, you know, that with machismo, you know, um, you know, men do what they have seen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, but I have also worked with couples that have worked on that, just like I have worked with couples that are going to separate and be healthy. You know, it all depends on the person. Everybody internalizes their trauma, uh, differently. You know, I would almost say you, it's as unique as a fingerprint trauma and okay. how we internalize it, how we see it. You know, there's people that could um, that could, you know, uh, 
uh, maybe internalize it a different way uh, than somebody else and they could have the same trauma and that's okay mm -hmm. you know that's the human condition that that's what it is to be human we're all different we're all unique and that's a beautiful thing you know and and you know what our life process is doesn't have to be um better or or a competition to anybody else's yes, you know exactly. it's just simply about us being okay and feeling internally safe so. wow that's, that's awesome i like I love it. I love it what everything you say because mm -hmm. it's it's like that. Machismo. They, we need to talk about this. We need the information. We need to be show the kids. So I just want to ask you. So you think like we need to be show everything of the children. We need to be you know the like a mother or families are responsible to show the kids how how it really work the machismo. El machismo tenemos que enseñarle a los niños. Um, yo, yo pienso que es importante, you know, like I, I think that it's important uh, to be aware. Mm -hmm. uh, yo pienso que es importante eh, enseñar. Obviamente, uh, eh, cuando son chiquitos, pienso que le enseñamos de una forma más inconsciente, como siendo consciente nosotros de lo que es el machismo, cómo lo podemos, como estaba diciendo mm -hmm. anteriormente, ¿verdad? Como los límites deben ser los mismos, si hay, si hay niñas y niños, eh, debe ser debe ser parejo, ¿verdad? Con los eh, límites, eh, no le deberemos gritar, uh, no le deberemos, eh, a, you know, a, abusar físicamente a nuestros niños, porque uh -huh. eso puede, eh, con esa dinámica puede continuar en una relación en el futuro, claro. uh, ¿verdad? Y también como con nuestra cultura también se tiene que tomar en mente eh, nuestra cultura machista hace a veces que el hombre se identifique con el agresor y que la mujer se identifique eh, con la víctima, ¿me entendés? Entonces esos, eh, esos, eso hace a la mujer más vulnerable. Entonces si de repente una mujer lo está gritando pegando a un niño, eso puede tener implicaciones muy diferentes que si se lo hacen a la mujer, oh, okay. pero las dos muy negativas. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Eh, si crecemos en esa casa con machismo, ¿verdad? Exacto. Obviamente eso no quiere decir que porque crecimos así vamos a terminar así, no. Uh, you know, uh, so so um, so what I'm saying is like, you know, like especially in machista culture, uh, you know, because uh, there's a certain level of male dominance over women. Uh, what happens with machista culture is that the the man identifies with the aggressor and the woman identifies with the victim. So that has its own implications on how their future relationships might go. Like I said, there's always exceptions. Like, it doesn't mean that because we were raised like this, you know, we're going to be uh, a certain way. But I, I think that uh, what I'm saying raises a certain level of consciousness so that we could be more aware and we could, like, you know, try to raise our future generations uh, a little bit different so that, you know, we could we could kind of put an end, you know, to these uh, to these attitudes and, and beliefs uh, against our women. That's perfect. It's perfect. So you did. So we know. So the machismo is a trauma and. We need to know about it, and we need to sh we need to learn it. We need to learn it how we're, how we be working on how we we are trick the kids with with all these machismo problems. Um, you know, like I said, uh, it it just has to do with um, it just has to do like you know with uh, with how we raise them, how you know the. Also, another thing that I didn't mention mm -hmm. is uh, the, you know, the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, like our first relationship that we see if it's, you know, a two parent home, obviously, is uh, the, mo the mother and the father, mm -hmm. you know, um, or, you know, obviously it could be mother and mother, it could mm -hmm. be father and mm -hmm. father, you know, there's different dynamics and, you know, but I guess we're, we're specifically talking about machismo and the more traditional roles. And so if we are fulfilling those traditional roles, Um, I guess, you know, it would be important for there to be equality. Mm -hmm. You know, a relationship is not a dictatorship. You know, it's a team. And so, we work together to make it happen. Okay. You know, so when you do everything and when you're a tyrant over your relationship, then that doesn't, that no longer works, you know. Um, and that's a, a way that, you know, we could potentially show um, our children Uh, attitudes of machismo. So it's like, it's all about modeling and it's all about how we treat our children, exactly. you know? So we need to treat our children how we want them to have a relationship and treat others, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, raising children comes along with a certain level of social consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I think I think that it's important for us to um, 
raise our children consciously and think about, you know, the future that we want to see, you know, especially uh, with the things that we've been seeing, you know, with the injustices that have been happening lately just in our country, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, you know, I think I think it's taking a turn uh, for the better. Um, But, you know, um, so there's there's a a lot of, you know, a a lot of horrible things going on in in the world, you know, with um, you know, discrimination, racism, uh, gender biases, that's, that's you know, violence. About, and so, yeah. you know, that's not OK. Yeah, um, that's not OK. And um, and so, yeah. So like we, we need to we need to teach our children that it's, you know, how to respect another human being uh, based on, on, on the person, you know. And like I said, you know, we, we have to raise our children more consciously and we need to raise our children thinking about the future that we want to see for our children. Exactly. So like um so I, I like that that point you you was you was telling about we need to be show the respect other like humans and okay. I was thinking like like co- the community LGTB uh-huh. so I'll yeah they need to respect them too yeah right absolutely 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 um uh you know because the LGBTQR community you know like um uh, that's love is love, you know, yeah, and that's and, just and how we, I feel. Exactly. <laughs> that's how I feel. That's how I feel. And then we that's how need I to feel about that. all human beings, you know. Exactly. Obviously, when it comes to machismo, it's a little bit They're different. They're called maricas, mariquitas. Uh, I don't know. There are many, many, many words for people like that. Yeah. And, and I think that to some degree, like that could be a result of um, of machismo as well. Yeah. You know, um, I think, you know, for for our homosexual men, uh, gay men, mm-hmm. I think that um, it's a very scary place to be in a machista world. We're girl, we're talking you know? about that. I was uh, the other day. I'm well. Um, my my coworker, he's a new. He's tra- he's translate. You know, transgender. Mm-hmm. Oh, we don't nice. care. We don't care. He's he says she is. Well, she is. You know, we, yeah. I call her. She like it. He like it. I don't know. But sometimes he's confused. But we, we we try to respect that, you know. Right. Right. And like I was thinking when I was more little or working with uh, my Mexican community or cultura cultura mexicana. Claro. They don't like it. They don't they don't like see someone you know wearing like a woman dressed like men dressed like a woman. Right. So 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 machista so racistas. Mm-hmm. But you think about that. I, I don't I don't think that it's OK. Um, you know, I I think that the gay community um, is a wonderful community and they just they just, um, you know, and it's unfortunate that we have to like subtype them. Right. Uh, that it can't just be like, you know, because I don't I don't talk about being heterosexual. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't I don't talk about liking men and, and that being OK to like men. You know, it would mm-hmm. be so uh, amazing if it could be neutralized. But unfortunately, it has to be talked about because uh, there's uh, very not accepting attitudes and beliefs, you know, sometimes. It, but, you know, at the very end of it, it really hurts people. And and um, and, you know, there's a lot of trauma because of that. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a yes. lot of trauma. There's, you know, uh, suicide rates, you know, alcoholism. Uh, these are all things that are prevalent in the gay community because of all the, the, the trauma that, you know, societal standards, you know, put on the LGBTQR, mm-hmm. you know. But, you know, in, in our, uh, in, you know, Latin Most America, like Latin ma- American machismo, uh, you know, doesn't allow, doesn't allow for... Uh, sometimes, you know, um, the ho- homicides every time too, like yeah. femicide, homicides too, yeah. the same level. Absolutely, and the past past years is the same. Yeah, it's it's very sad. It's very sad, and it's a reality. And it, it shouldn't it shouldn't happen. You know, it no. should it should there should be like a, a neutral attitude. You know, um, we are humans. Yes, and I think that that's you know that should be obviously we have to point out. You know what's going on and what the attitudes and beliefs are, but you know um, it is. It's it's very sad. Very sad. Other um, other topic, other thing you want to tell us about you, where we can find you, or where is your uh, consult or your therapist? Sure. Um. So. Uh. So I have my um. I have my office in Danbury. Uh, my LLC is called Danbury Healing Insights Counseling Services. Um, right now I'm doing therapy, uh, 
through through video, um, you know, because because of the whole uh, coronavirus situation. And and I've seen that it's easier for clients to um, be able to take part in, in therapy um, now with like, you know, the, the busyness of everything. Um, I accept Aetna, Anthem, Cigna, United Healthcare um, and Husky Medicaid. Um, I also do like discounted rates for self-pays. Um, so, so yeah, so okay. my phone number, uh, is, uh, 914-625-2641. And then my website is the name of my practice, which is Danbury Healing Insights Counseling Services.com. Um, and I'm also on psychology today under Augustina Hortel Rios Lopez. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I want to say thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for enjoying it. And that, that was really nice to really pleasure to talking about machismo <laughs> it is a pleasure for me too and 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 i hope that um i hope that this podcast uh inspires um uh, change empowers uh with education you know psychoeducation um is everything um in creating change because uh sometimes we're unaware and when we're unaware it's okay but once we're aware then we could really make change happen you know information is very powerful Um, and so, you know, this is nothing against men. Uh, this is nothing against women. Um, this is just bringing clarity to this issue and, and how it, it can really hurt families. Um, it hurt our women. Um, yep. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for so listening much. us. Thank you so much. Mujeres del siglo XXI. Keep yes. listening. Thank Episodio you. Seis. Thank you, Mujeres del Siglo XXI. Um, uh, uh, thank you for, for letting me be on the podcast. I really um, appreciate it. Um, and, uh, and yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Okay. Okay.